yesterday we looked at Revelation chapter 9 in lesson 14 of Revelation Unveiled. Today in course 3, you know, uh, course 311, Revelation Unveiled, we go on to lesson number 15 and we're going to be looking at one of the one of the short chapters in the book of Revelation, but by the time the Lord finish unpacking it today, we'll see that oh, there's really much more in it than what we thought, and we are doing this with a pattern we have adopted. Try not to veer off from the essence of the word. The book of Revelation is a sensitive one, and so. We're receiving from the Lord clarity concerning the passages rather than going to construct anything new. And so sometimes we pull from various scriptures as Holy Spirit leads us to show so that those who are studying would know. So lesson 15, and this will give you a little background before we pray and get into it. One of the features of the book of Revelation is the reality that the chapters are not chronologically put, you know, in a sequence. This happens, then this one, this one, no. He's shown visions of different things. And there are times when there are interludes between different things. For instance, the seal judgments in Revelation chapter 6, when he got to um, the end of chapter 6, instead of the chapter 7 continuing the seal judgments, Revelation 7 is a picture of the sealing of the 144,000 of the Jews that were to be sealed against destruction during the Great Tribulation. And then we see the innumerable company of the of the remnant out of the Gentiles who also are called the tribulation saints, those who will be killed for their faith during the great tribulation. And then in chapter 8, we now go on, I mean, we went on to see the trumpet judgments in chapter 8 and chapter 9. In chapter 10, instead of finishing the trumpet judgments, we see another interlude. And that interlude lasts till Revelation chapter 11, verse 14, and it's in Revelation 11, 15, that the seventh angel sounded, the seventh trumpet sounded. So we just try to explain that the book of Revelation, if you are not sensitive and wait on the Lord, you might just miss it up. If you read it like literature, you miss it. If you rush through it, you miss it. It's only when you wait on the Lord that the Lord can begin to unpack what is there and you find clarity, simplicity. And by the grace of the Lord, that's what the Lord is doing for us so that we can understand this book that is written for our blessing. It was for our good that the Father gave us a sneak peek of what is to happen. Over 2,000 years ago, he told us what will happen in our time. And the more we look at what's going on in the world today, the unraveling of things across the world, anyone who has the slightest iota of prophetic sensing would know that we are in a time like has never been seen before. We have never come to this kind of time when the, 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 the pathway for the manifestation of the Antichrist is so clear now, except somebody who doesn't want to acknowledge it. And the interesting thing is that prophets are going to miss it so much so that they are going to prophesy into the manifestation of the Antichrist and thinking that they are talking about God's servant. Brothers and sisters, are you not seeing what's unraveling around the world? Things are just imploding, imploding. Things are happening. These are the shakings we're talking that will happen. The shakings are necessary so that the things that are not cannot be shaken will remain. And so, brothers and sisters, we need to get on with the book of Revelation chapter 10. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, the I am who I am, we bless you for the opportunity to come before you this morning, to receive light from your word, to receive direction from your word, to receive grace, to live according to your word. Father, without your grace, we are toast. Have your way and preserve us with your own right hand of righteousness and enable us to understand and walk in the light of your truth in Yeshua's name. Amen and amen. So Revelation 10 opens with a very interesting picture. And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head, and his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. And he had in his hand a little book open, 
and he set his right foot upon the sea and his left foot upon the earth. Brothers and sisters, in receiving the book of Revelation, John saw different angels, different categories. He saw cherubims, the living beings. He saw angels who were on assignment. He saw the angels. He saw an innumerable company of angels. And there were times when specific angels were asked to kind of give John a, a tour of the future. So here, he, he sees what appears to be a special angel. He calls it another mighty angel who came down from heaven. The angel was clothed with a cloud, had a rainbow upon his head. His face was as radiant as the sun and feet was as pillars of fire. And then he had an open book in his hand. This angel exudes such authority that he sets his right foot upon the sea, that is the oceans, the waters, and his left hand upon the earth, the physical earth, and then certain things happen. Some commentators have speculated about the identity of this angel. Some claim it describes Yeshua. Well, some attribute this notion that is Yeshua to the way Yeshua was described in Revelation chapter 1 with some of the features here. For safety reasons, we caution against such speculations. The basic principle in prophetic scripture is the principle in Deuteronomy 29, 29. The secret things belong unto the Lord. The things that are revealed belong to us. It is not everything the Lord just makes plain. And those that he didn't make plain, let's learn to take them as it is. Say, mighty angel, let's stop there. Let's not speculate whether it's Yeshua. Because Yeshua was in the throne. The lamb that was slain. The one that took the scroll from the hand of the father and began to all, uh, you know, untie it. If it was Yeshua directly will have said this, so let's just stop any speculation. Verse 3, he cried with a loud voice, as when a lion roared, and when he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. And when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write, and I heard a voice from heaven say unto me, seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered, and write them not. Now, let's do a little commentary of this. The, what I told, number one, the voice of the angel is described as similar to the roaring of a lion. It was loud, it was strong, it was powerful. Number two, the angel's voice triggers the response of seven thunderclaps that were audible messages. Seven thunderclaps, audible messages. And three, as John was set to write what was uttered, he had some things. He had a he had some things that amounted to a message, you know, something audible you could hear. He, as he was about to write, he had a voice from heaven asking him to seal up the words and not to record them. Men and brethren, curious students may ask why John was given permission to he, see and hear what may have been such a powerful message and then prevented from documenting the same for humanity. And the most biblical response is this. If the Lord wanted us to know what was uttered, he would have allowed it to be documented. And at the end of the day, we need to accept the reality that Elohim is supreme. He knows what is best for us. And he has worked out everything. Everything has been worked out already. All things that pertain to life and godliness, he has provided for us, including revelation, that we need to fulfill our destinies. So we just learn to embrace and trust his judgment, like what was said in Deuteronomy 29, 29, the secret things belong unto the Lord our Elohim. But if those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. So let's learn, brothers and sisters, to take the things the Lord reveals, the things he didn't reveal, the things he didn't cry to, we don't need to use our mental realm. You know, in the book of Job, uh, you know, I, I'm now in the book of Job, you know, studying the book, of, you know, the Old Testament. And one of the questions one of the people asks is, can you by searching find Elohim? Is it by analytical thinking you find Elohim? The answer is no. Elohim is known by revelation. And what he doesn't reveal Let's learn that there's so much he has revealed up that are enough to take us on the journey to eternity. Verse 5, the angel which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth 
lifted up his hand to heaven and swear by him that liveth forever and ever who created heaven and the things that therein are and the earth and the things that therein are and the sea and the things which are therein that there should be time no longer this is serious so this angel let's do a little commentary lifted up his voice and swore by elohim it was time for consummation of all things from that point on so to say the program set by elohim for the end of the age is activated for fulfillment it should be time no more men and brethren we're going to come to understand this two the angel did not issue the decree of himself but cited the authority he subscribed to he was under he who is immortal he who is the creator of heaven and all things therein and of the earth rim and all things therein the marine wall, the water wall, and all things that are therein, the angel relied entirely on the authority and power of Elohim to make this powerful proclamation. Brothers and sisters, so should we, when confronted by mountains of life. When David was confronted by Goliath, he said, Goliath, you come against me with shield and spear. I come against you in the name of the Lord Elohim of hosts, whose armies you have defiled. Men and brethren, mountains are not moved by our power. They are not moved by emotion. They are not moved by our feeling. They are moved by who he who we believe in, he who sends us. Number three, we need to count ourselves fortunate to have a heavenly father who will reveal these things over 2,000 years ago document them for our learning and have the patience and long suffering to hold back the the end as it were so that more of us can be really ready and as many as possible who are sinners can be saved peter the apostle put it succinctly when answering questions regarding those who made mockery of end of the age you know P peter said some things that are interesting he said in second peter chapter 3 this second epistle beloved I now write unto you in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that ye should be mindful of the words which are spoken before by the holy prophets, and of the commandments of the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lust and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? Or since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. Men and brethren, there will be scoffers. You see them today, all this end time thing. It's not today we had it. We've been hearing end time, end time. When is it going to happen? Are you not hearing such scoffers? Then Peter said something, verse 5. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of Elohim, the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. Now, Peter didn't go to school, but Peter had accurate description of this earth dream, standing in water and on water. Men and brethren, this is so interesting. Verse 6, whereby the wall that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same water kept in store, reserved unto the, reserved unto the, and uh, reserved unto fire against the door of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day with the Lord is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us who are not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Men and brethren, this is the point that was made, that 2,000 years ago, this angel announced that time will be no more, and yet Elohim kind of waiting. You know what? I believe that part of it is that you and I will come into the kingdom. And then having come into the kingdom, I believe the Lord wanted to process us with truth and bring us to the place where it, when the end comes, he will have ripped our soul because we will have been truly ready. Don't let anybody confuse you. It is the long suffering of Elohim. It is the patience of Elohim that the things that are spoken about in the book of Revelation, it didn't happen that time. And the Lord had to wait and wait and wait. There's something about the way Elohim. You study the Bible, you see him more and more and more. That ability to bear and forbear with people. It would have, how many times did he want to destroy Israel? Moses said, oh, please, Father, rather take my own life. 
and not only with Moses, so also other things. So brothers and sisters, it is important that we know that the reason why this has not happened is that the Lord had a plan for you and I who are hearing this now so that we can allow him to fix things for us and make sure that we do not miss it. And listen, there's something the Lord also says. We should come to a place where we value the crown of life so highly that we do not allow anything to take our eyes off it. Then let's continue. Verse 7. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when it shall begin to sound, the mystery of Elohim shall be finished, as he had declared to his servants the prophets. So, what commentary do we make here? The statement in verse 7 is subject to various interpretations. People have described, described it in various ways. What we are going to do is something allowed in Scripture. That is to say, that which we believe to the most scripturally sound and give you some scriptures to show you what we believe he meant by in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of Elohim should be finished, as he had declared to serve as a prophet. So what is it that we received here? Number one, Elohim is a mystery. We receive a revelation of his person, his nature and in attributes entirely by faith. And the reality that we see in the Holy Scriptures of Elohim as three persons in one, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, is a profound mystery. Many have stumbled trying to use their carnal minds to apprehend and comprehend the triune Godhead. When we open our hearts by faith as babes to receive the plain report of the Scriptures, this huge profound mystery. This veiled truth becomes a living reality. That's why I say we should accept we are like little children. We cannot enter the kingdom. Brothers and sisters, there are some scriptures that clearly establish the uniqueness of this Godhead we talk about. Like Genesis 1 26, Elohim said, let us make man in our. What does that mean? Genesis 3.22, when Adam and Eve sinned against Elohim, he said, Behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil, lest he put his foot his hand and take of the tree of life and eat and live forever. So they sent angels, you know, the cherubims to guard, to guard the garden so that Adam and Eve would not be able to crash back in. When the, the men building the Tower of Babel were building in Genesis 11, and Elohim came to see what did he say in verse 6? The Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have one language. This they do, nothing will be restrained from them which they begin to do. Then verse 7, go to, let us go down. And confound their language, and they may not understand one another. So you see all these things. It's right there in plain writing about the Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And in John 14, Yeshua said in verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. If you had known me, you will have known my Father also. And from henceforth you know him, and have seen him. Seen him in who? Yeshua. Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father. And he sufficeth us. Yeshua said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He that has seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but of the Father that sent me, and the Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the works' sake. Then John 7, 37. He said, in the last day, that great day of the feast, Yeshua stood and cried, saying, If any man test, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, he out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And he said that this he spoke of the Holy Spirit who was not yet given. And Yeshua said to them in John 14, 15, If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father. He shall give you another comforter, one like me that he may abide with you forever. He is a spirit being, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because he seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him, for he dwelleth with you, and he shall be in you. 
I will not leave you comfortless. I'll come to you. So this is these things show clearly the peculiar nature of the Elohim who we kingdom citizens serve, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We receive by faith, brothers and sisters, one of the most profound truths we can ever receive is the reality that a day is coming when the veil of the mystery of Elohim will be pulled back and we shall see him as he is and relate with him. We believe the angel was announcing this phase of the kingdom, you know, that is describing these words like Revelation 21. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, come down from Elohim out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven say, Behold, the tabernacle of Elohim is with men, and he shall dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and Elohim himself shall be, be with them, and, and be their Elohim. And God shall wipe away all tears from all from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor cry, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I give unto him that is a test. The fountain of the water of life freely, he that overcometh shall inherit all things. So we see here a description of a time in the future when the mystery of Elohim will be accomplished. There will be no more mystery because we see him as he is and he will be interacting with us. We are told in verse 22 of Revelation 21, and I saw no temple there. There will be no need for any temple, no need. For the Lord Elohim Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city has no need for light because the radiance of their glory shall give light. And in Revelation chapter 22, we are told, and he showed me a pure river of life, a river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of Elohim and of the Lamb. And in the midst of the street of it on either side, there was the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more cause, but the throne of Elohim and of the Lamb shall be in it. And the servant and the servant shall serve him, and they shall see his face, and his name shall be on their foreheads. And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle. <coughs> Excuse me. One second. <clears throat> they need no candle, neither light of the sun. For the Lord Elohim giveth them light. They shall reign forever and ever. Now listen. It is important to know that the day will come when the mystery of Elohim is accomplished. We're going to interact with him at close quarter. The communion will be real. And then concerning mysteries again, the Bible has a few things to say about specific aspects of Elohim's plans that are kind of wrapped up in ministry. For instance, the, the falling away and ultimate re salvation of the Jews is a mystery. And Romans 11 deals with the mystery. And then from verse 25, it says, I will not, have, brethren, have you ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceits and blindness in part. It's happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles come in. So Israel is packed somewhere, is packed somewhere, trying to please Elohim, but under the veil of Moses. Then the Lord is meanwhile gathering the fullness of the Gentiles. When they come in full, Israel will be restored to the full understanding, and all Israel will be saved. And then men and brethren, the mystery of Yeshua is described in Revelation chapter 3. You know, he said in verse 3, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote for in few words, as a mystery of the reality of the presence of Yeshua and Holy Spirit inside of sins. Colossians 1, 20 to the end, First Thessalonians, I mean First Corinthians chapter 3, 16, 17, about Holy Spirit in us, and it makes a difference. First Corinthians 6, 17 to 20. The reality of the Holy Spirit is in us. This is a part of mystery that we are mobile temples of Elohim. 
We go to the mall, he's there with us. We go to we go to school, he's there with us. We go to our workplaces, he's here with us. In the marketplace, in the pulpit, he's right there with us. And brothers and sisters, it's so important. Then we now come to the end of the chapter, verse 8. And the voice which I had from heaven spoke to me again and said, Go and take the little book, which is open in the hand of the angel, which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. And I went to the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it and eat it, and it shall make thy belly bitter but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up. It was in my mouth sweet as honey, and as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. So what was the commentary? At the end of this chapter, we are told that John was instructed to take the book from the hand of the angel. He went in holy boldness, took it, and he was instructed to eat it up and was told what would happen. He ate it. It was sweet as honey. He, inside his belly, it was bitter. Men and brethren, and John, they received a mandate to prophesy before many people, nations, tongues, and kings. It is important to know something. The gospel according to John the Johannine epistles, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, you know, and the, the book of Revelation, these ones represent prophecies concerning the church, the kingdom, concerning the world to come. And these have been standard fare the Lord has used to touch lives of peoples across the world, all over the world, anywhere there are humans, kings, princes, all manner of people, the writings of John coming out of the experience has brought the testimony of Yeshua into courts of kings and people in high places. What are the inferences we have, we have here? The standard of Elohim is to make us partakers of his word when we eat it, when we take it in, before sending us forth to be his witnesses. If we enjoy intimate relationship with Elohim, his word can then flow from the innermost parts of our being to touch lives of many. We are told that to be with the Lord precedes to go for him. People want to go for him, but they say, be with me first. Mark 3.13, he goeth up into a mountain, calleth unto him those whom he would, and they came to him. And he ordained twelve that they should be with him, number one, and that he might send them forth to preach, number two, and he gave them power to heal sicknesses and to cast out devils. Some people want to heal and cast out devils without first being with the king, without also being sent by him, because they are attracted by the name they want to make for themselves and the glory they want to accumulate for themselves or the money they want to make, and then it leads to a missionary, you know, uh, perspective. No, the Lord said, be with me. Then from what I do inside of you, like John ate that book, that book came into him, bitter inside. There's bitterness that heals, that kills. And you know what? They say, you're going to prophesy to people. Out of our bellies shall flow rivers of living water. That's the way the Lord works. Now you see this short, past, this ch short chapter, but just by bringing scripture with scripture, the Lord has shown us what his mind is towards it. And we all who are partakers of the Johannine experience, you know, in the heavenly realm, what we read from John should also be allowed to be made flesh in us. We need to understand it. And then it begins to govern our attitude to everything. It doesn't matter whatever we experience, white, black, red, blue, green, listen, there are certain things that are common. One of them is that we're going to be under pressure. Let's guard our hearts with all diligence. Let's guard our mind. You're going to be misunderstood by people. Guard your heart. Guard your mind. Never, ever allow the temple of Holy Spirit in you to be violated. And any time you stagger, be recovered. Don't wait. There's some reason why Paul said, hey, Anger is normal in human nature, but don't allow it to stretch from morning till night, till evening. You know why? Because we don't know when the king will return, and the Lord wants us to keep our temples holy and pure. And brothers and sisters, listen, 
The world never promised us a trouble-free world. There's nowhere in the Bible the Lord say, "Hey, once you're born again, things will, everything your bread, your bread will be buttered. Everything will happen. Even roses grow in the midst of thorns. Even lilies grow in the midst of thorns. What is it? It is in spite of that the best of us comes out. What happens to you in the inside?" When people speak evil of you, lie against you. What happens to you when people, you know, make insinuations against you? What happens when people seek ways to kind of, you know, blackmail you and all kinds of things? What happens inside of you? What happens? Are you conscious? Are we conscious of Elohim's immanence, knowing us in the inside? Are we conscious of his omniscience, of his omnipresence. The Lord wants us to be conscious that the book of Revelation is not to be read for reading's sake. It is to prepare us for that day. And in the preparation, we don't control the narrative. Elohim alone controls it. And what he allows to come our way, he has given us enough grace to overcome, to love, to love, to love. Love him, love people. You know what? And by the grace of the Lord, to let go. What we cannot handle, we give it to him. And keep our heart, and keep our mind. And to be sure of one thing, he wants to use you. Make no mistake about it. He wants to use you. And if you give him a chance, he will surely use you. By way of assignment, please share any five things you learned from this lesson on Revelation chapter 10. Two. What aspect of this lesson provided much insight or challenged you most? And then, brothers and sisters, please share the video. Let other people who are not in the class, let them hear, let them see, let them understand the same thing. Let's not read the book as, uh, as a literature. This is revelation. We need the Spirit of the Lord to understand the details of what the Lord put in the book of Revelation. Share it with friends and family. It shall be well with you. Let's pray right now. Father in heaven, the great I am, who I am, we bless you. We give you all praise, all honor, all glory, all adoration for what you are doing. We acknowledge that without you, we can know nothing, understand nothing. We read this, it will be like literature. But by your grace, we are seeing the light, the glorious light in your world. Have your way and Continue to feed us until we want no more. Lord, we pray that the birds of the air will not snatch out what you have sown into our lives. Let the blood secure every heart and mind and will and emotion into your divine purpose. Thank you, Father. Keep your remnant worldwide. And let none stumble out of you. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for being with us on this program and watching and we believe you learned something and the Lord bless you. Now it's time to connect with us on our social media platforms. We have a daily live stream on Facebook Monday all the way to Sunday every day by about 10.30 a.m. UK time and that's the same at Nigerian time and you, it's either Apostle George Monday to Friday uh, to Thursday, Pastor Grace uh, Friday to Sunday, and then in the evening of Sunday, we have two sessions from 5.30 to about 6, after 6, another one up to 7. So please join us on the live stream, and you're going to enjoy it. We also visit our website, www.gsom.ac, to download free ebooks. This course you just listened to, all these lessons, you know, there's an ebook we have free of charge. Everything we do is free. But more importantly, you can actually do your program on, you know, ebooks. You can do your program entirely on ebooks and with this video or anyone you want. You can also, if you want to do the Yes course or be, do the Master Class, you can go to www.kingdombooksclub.com and you can subscribe so that you can do it. You can also subscribe to our channels. This YouTube, gsom.tv, and we also have a Telegram channel, gsom media. You can send us an email at akclife.tv at gmail.com. We love you dearly, and we want to partner with you to make sure that the body of Yeshua, Jesus, is empowered with truth. Remember, it is the teach, train, equip, activate, and release paradigm. 
absolutely free of charge. Have a blessed day and we'll see you again soon.